Hi, we're once again rolling into Search for a Nonviolent Future, and we actually have reached Chapter 4. Chapter 4 has the awkward title, Work versus Work. Uh, people have told me that this is a difficult title, but I don't know, somehow I like the idea and I stick with it. It comes from a quote from Ted Rojak that I have at the top of the chapter that people try nonviolence for a week, and when it doesn't work, quote unquote, they go back to violence, which hasn't worked for centuries. That's, that's how we are. So I talk about the difference between getting something done that you want it to do right now, which is work, it worked, versus doing good work, working on the structure, working on the social field to make things better. And, uh, you know, I, I don't remember whether I mentioned it in the book, but one of Gandhi's biographers, B.R. Nanda, talks about a famous episode in which Gandhi seemed to lose face. It was called the Patna Surrender in 1925. He had uh, been in jail for a while and when he came out, the Congress party had kind of reversed one of his most important decisions. Everybody thought, oh boy, those guys are in trouble. Now Gandhi's back and he's mad. Uh, but uh, instead, what he did was he looked at what they had done. He said they made their decision based on, you know, their love of the country. I, you know, I don't agree with their decision, but they came, back, but came by it honestly. Not only did he say, I'm not going to resist them, I'm going to help them. So he joined them. And everybody said, this is terrible. And he said, don't worry. My surrender was my victory. And he said, people see the fighter in me but they miss my ability to surrender, which is where my power springs. Now, sure enough, uh, a couple of months later, the Congress party came completely around to his side. So this is a terrific example of work without quotes. It seemed not to work, but it worked. Just as the Salt Satyagraha, the climax of the freedom struggle in 1930, it accomplished basically nothing other than putting hundreds of thousands of people into jail, having them beaten, losing their properties. It didn't work, but it did the biggest work of his whole career. It really showed the world that India could not be ruled and that as an American journalist, Webb Miller, who was on the scene at the Darsana salt pans said, this shows that the moral superiority that we thought we had over the West is unreal. We cannot go on ruling the world in this way anymore. So that's probably the most conspicuous historical example of work versus work. So B. R. Nanda, one of Gandhi's biographers, said, nonviolence is the kind of thing where you can lose all the battles and go on to win the war. Very astute. Recently, there has been a film called Gateways in which six former members of Shin Beit, the Israeli security uh, division, uh, are interviewed. And one of them made a very interesting remark about his work. He said, we are winning all the battles and losing the war. So this is a classic difference between violence and nonviolence. In violence, you seem to win, but you're really lurching from crisis to crisis, and eventually you collapse. Whereas in nonviolence, even if you seem to lose, what you're really doing is changing things for the better and eventually everybody will win. We even have now some scientific evidence for this. Uh, you can imagine how excited I was to hear this fact. Nobody knew why I was so excited, but uh, you will understand. In this great study of the difference between violent and nonviolent insurrections, that was done by Erica Chenoweth and Maria Stefan, which showed that nonviolent insurrections were twice as effective, took one third the time, so on and so forth, and lead to greater democratic freedoms. She discovered that they lead to greater democratic freedoms even if they fail, work, quote unquote, not work, than violent ones even if they succeed. Violent insurrection, you overthrow Noriega, send him to prison, uh, and uh, guess what? Uh, you end up back in the same old, same old. But in nonviolent ones, even if the dictator stays in power, we're talking about that kind of insurrection, uh, you have made things better, and in the end, it will be better for everyone. It's incredibly simple. I used to actually apologize for this 
when I was teaching at the university because as a professor I'm supposed to take simple ideas and make them complicated enough so that intellectuals can understand them. That was my job description. But it's really incredibly simple. There are two kinds of energy in the world, violent and nonviolent. The more we learn to use nonviolent energy, the better things will be for everyone. So with this uh, encouraging, upbeat perspective, let's launch into our next uh, section, chapter four of Search for a Nonviolent Future. Thanks very much for now.